Good morning team, welcome back to the Departure Brief. My name is Matt, I'll be your guide today. I have just arrived in Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh. I'm staying at Pool Top Hostel. I'm gonna be in Cambodia for 30 days. This is day one. Now I wanna see what the city has to offer. Let's go explore. Today we're going on a self-guided walking tour from Pool Top Hostel to the Independence Monument. We're going to see a lot of attractions and I'm going to share with you my first impressions of Cambodia. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and let's explore Cambodia together. So there's lots of questions online about Phnom Penh International Airport and let me tell you, it was at first very smooth and then very chaotic. Getting off the plane and then getting out of the airport as long as you've got your visa, although you can get a visa on arrival, man, it wouldn't have taken more than 10 minutes. It was such, such a smooth process. But then when you're trying to get from the airport to your accommodation, it can be a bit chaotic. My word of advice would be to have an eSIM before you arrive activated for Cambodia. If not, you can just get a normal local SIM card for your phone at the airport when you arrive. Then download Grab, book a tuk-tuk to your accommodation and go and meet the driver. Because I didn't have my eSIM turned on when I arrived, I used the Wi-Fi to get the grab that I had to go and walk and find with no internet. And in that time, I had three other tuk-tuk drivers come up to me with phones acting like they were my driver, but they actually weren't. Luckily, my driver found me and then we took the tuk-tuk for 15 minutes into Phnom Penh to check in at my hostel. First coffee experience in Cambodia. Got an iced latte for 4,000 real. Now, if you don't know, Cambodia kind of operates off two different currencies. They have got Cambodian real and USD. For me, this is going to be a bit challenging. Australia, we don't usually use cash. We are very much a cashless society. So to have two lots of cash that I have to convert to Australian dollars is going to be quite hard. Luckily, I've got this Belroy wallet here, which has a divider in the middle. So got my real on this side and then my USD on this side. That helps a little bit. But I think how it works here is that ATMs, when I was at the ATM at the airport, I got out cash and it only had USD. Obviously the USD is a lot stronger than the real. So whenever I've been paying for things in US dollars, the change has been coming in real. I'm not sure how they do the conversion, but you just gotta trust the system or work it out for yourself. In notes, I have both conversions so that I could quickly pull out my calculator and do some maths if I need to. But yeah, interesting. Double currency, not a fan. But I am a fan of this ice latte. Airport chaos, double currencies aside, my initial vibe that I'm picking up here in Phnom Penh is a good one. The people seem really friendly, the streets are nice, it's very green, and the temperature, it's a sunny day, but I'm not covered in sweat, it's a nice climate. So think of Phnom Penh as the capital, the historical center, the culture center of Cambodia. So the first stop is Wat Phnom Duan Penh Temple bit of a tongue twister. The temple was built in 1372 and it's the tallest religious structure in the city. An interesting fact about this temple is it's where Phnom Penh gets its name from. Phnom means hill and Dien Pen was the founder of the temple. Let's go and take a look. So the temple complex isn't the biggest but it is definitely worth checking out. It only costs one US dollar to come in here and you get to see the locals going through their religious practices. You get to learn about a bit of the history of Phnom Penh and Cambodia and it's just cool to look at. Check out this stupa. So I'm guessing this temple hosting this stupa is what makes it the tallest religious structure in the city. What's so famous about this stupa is that it's said to contain relics from the founder, Duan Pen. This site in general is a spot for religious ceremonies and special events throughout the year. And it's definitely one that you should add to your itinerary when you're in Phnom Penh. I feel like it's a must see just because of the cultural significance to the site. So on to stop number two. So I've just arrived at the Old Market, right in the center of Phnom Penh, established in 1937 during the French colonial rule. It's a great spot to experience the bustle of Phnom Penh. You can buy fresh produce, knickknacks, try street food, anything else you would associate with a Southeast Asian market. So 
So this is Sisowath Riverside Park, again developed in the French colonial era. What it is, is essentially a boardwalk that runs alongside the Tonsap River for about three kilometers. Go that way and that way. It's a really good spot to just walk along and chill. There's lots of bars and cafes and restaurants on this side. And you can even take river cruises to take in the city by water. You can see them all lined docked up over there. Make sure you come here. It's an essential stop in Phnom Penh. Is Phnom Penh a safe city? That is a question that came up so often when I was researching this place. As an Australian on Smart Traveller, Cambodia as a whole is listed as green, exercise normal safety precautions, which tells you everything you need to know because usually government websites are over cautious. But from my opinion, what I'm picking up from this city is a very chill and relaxed vibe. This is what you need to know. Be alert for street scams. I've already had a couple people try and rip me off, but usually it's a lot more people trying to rip me off as an Australian tourist. Traffic is by far the biggest danger. It's literally like a video game. I hope you're good at dodging tuk-tuks and motorbike because they just don't give a crap. And as always, be careful when you're on the piss. Don't be an idiot after dark. Always be respectful and enjoy that sweet Cambodian hospitality and culture. I got a hot tip that restaurant Indigo Taste of India in Phnom Penh is the place to be and I can confirm that is the case. Check this out for five US dollars. I know, I know, it might not be Cambodian cuisine. You're gonna have to forgive me though, because this is one of the best meals I've had on this trip. Period, across all countries. Since July 7th, this meal is top 10. I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of this meal. Deleted. <laughs> Talk about a grand entrance. This is the entrance gate to the Royal Palace. I'm not going to go in today, I'm trying to save a little bit of money and it costs about 15 Australian dollars to enter. But what I will do is describe the waterfront of Phnom Penh. It really is a different vibe here and I've been to every single Southeast Asian country apart from Myanmar for obvious reasons. And the vibe here is different, it's unique. I'm in the busiest part of the capital, the waterfront, where all the restaurants are, the Royal Palace, the History Museum is behind that, the river there is super busy and it is quiet. It is quiet, it is relaxed, nobody's in a hurry, everybody is happy to have a chat. I really like it here, I really do. I'm happy I've got five days here. On with the tour. So as you walk along the promenade, you're walking along Tong Sap River. Now, if you keep going, eventually it intercepts the mighty Mekong. This is the Mekong River, one of the biggest rivers in the world and the biggest in Southeast Asia. So, you can see here, you walk along the Donsap River along the promenade and then behind that white building and that little peninsula there is the Mekong and that keeps running along behind where we can't see. Check out my video if you want to know what the slow boat experience is traveling from northern Thailand to Laos for two days. It's absolutely amazing. One of my favorite things I've done on this trip. Look how wide it is. Jeez, it is a mighty river. So this is the second last stop on our first day in Cambodia, Wat Patong Park. Lovely, lovely gardens. What a day. And like I said about the climate before, it is the middle of the day and the sun is pelting down and I'm not dripping in sweat. So either I'm acclimatizing, which I doubt, or the climate is just nicer here. Let's hope for that. Right, I hope I don't offend anyone by saying this, but the vibe I'm picking up in Phnom Penh is that it's a much, 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 much smaller Bangkok with their own cultural personality. Here behind me, inspired by Angkor Wat, is the Independence Monument, built in 1958 to signify the end of colonial rule here in Cambodia. So there you have it folks, an incredible first day in Cambodia. I'm gonna absolutely love it here, can't wait for the next 29 days. If you enjoyed this video, there's gonna be heaps more Cambodia content coming up over the coming weeks. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, turn on notifications and have a great day.